All right, here we go. Hi, y'all. I am here with Johanna Leoblad. Um, she is a friend of mine I met a few years ago through um, my dear friend Chelsea Mayer. We went to a music festival together, all of us. Um, she's getting her PhD in Sydney and, and she is studying mechanisms by which nitrogen availability for plants changes under elevated CO2. <laughs> Um, so thanks so much <laughs> for talking to me today. Oh, no, thank you for, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, she, I'm quite excited to talk to her for a number of reasons. One for her scientific background, another for the fact that she's in the U.S. right now, another for the fact that she's um, from Sweden and returning there shortly, and also she has lived in Australia and is currently not able to get back in there. So there's a lot of different reasons. Um, that I'm keen to talk to you, but I'll start um, from the big picture. I know that, so you're studying soils, which probably has very little to do with um, a pandemic and viruses, but I'm curious, just from a scientific, academic, environmental perspective, have you thought much about the implications of the virus in the future? Well, you sort of, uh, it's hard not to, really, mm. because we spend a lot of time sitting in our houses just pondering the future and all yeah. the anxiety that comes with that right mm -hmm. uh and uh for better or for worse i think that or hopefully that um this global thing that we all went through together but separate is gonna change something if it doesn't i think that it's a very um uh, lost opportunity if nothing yeah else. yeah well i saw that um emissions all over the world have dropped for the last two months, which is interesting, but I just don't know. Yeah, I think that it's uh, it's cool to see that it it's um, possible. Yes, you know it took yeah. it took a lot of people not doing anything. Yeah, that produces CO two. Yeah, to sort yeah. of limit that output. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and. But I guess the interesting thing is it's some things are returning. I know in Australia, things are returning to, to a degree back to normal, but it'll be. It, I did see, um, I did see uh, bike lanes are being built in a lot of parts of Europe, which I thought was very exciting. So <laughs> yeah. um, during the like slowdown, it gave like nobody was on the streets. So it gave a lot of um, potential for people to build things. So I do think there's a lot to come from it. But yeah, you're right. You're right. This is <laughs> kind of like the world in some terrible ways gave us a chance, right? A terrible chance. Yeah. <laughs> but. A chance, but also um, also showing what we're sort of, maybe not well responsible for as well, but what we're mm -hmm. capable of changing. So yeah. Uh, so like say that we, that it's not a pandemic, but say that we choose to not um, use, uh, you know, transport or anything like that, that produces CO2, this is the scenario mm -hmm. that we'd be looking at, really. Yeah, the power and there is of the a lot people. Of involved in that too, but um, but the potential is there, and yeah. we know that it works because we've just seen it. It's a global experiment um, where yeah. suppressing um, CO, like human produced CO two emissions, and this is what we end up with. So it's yeah. pretty cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, th it, no one can no one can throw the argument out there that it cannot be done, right? So exactly, yeah. let's just uh, do it in a different way next time. Mm, yeah, yeah, let's do it without the fear and sickness and death. Well, that's another interesting thing is what motivates people as well, I think. But I digress a little bit. But yeah, it is um, it is is certainly an interesting time, and I, I'm I'm just really hoping that people like scientists. I talked to a um, a friend who works in biotechnology. He was talking about how these times are so significant because people can study them. So I just hope that there are enough studies being done. Like I'm not keeping up with that side of things at all. Like it's such an unprecedented time, as everyone's saying. So I hope that people are able to um, capture it. You know, like I don't know how, how quickly you can act on science. Like the world is shut down. Who how how quickly can we be like get out there and start measuring things? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is definitely um, people that are um, taking advantage of uh, the situations, um, and then there is like other um, 
types of science where you just create an experiment and we can recreate those anytime and it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. um, about the, the situations outside mm -hmm. of the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like, yeah, I definitely think that, um, you know, monitoring equipment that's up and running that doesn't need any um, maintenance or yeah. anything like that would have yeah. captured all of this data yeah this time. that's true i guess that like there are devices that are just always calculating data no matter what right yeah <laughs> yeah there's that's... definitely mm -hmm. long-term monitoring going on with mm -hmm. um you know like air pollution and temperature mm -hmm. and um you and know, obviously CO2 carbon climate. emissions yeah 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 because yeah. that's how they found out about that so yeah there mm -hmm. so i guess there could be potentially studies like if this place shut down more than this one, what were the long-term results like from a more specific, like in individual level as well, maybe? Yeah, uh, I think could, like all the data that's gathered can be used mm -hmm. in multiple different ways. It depends yeah. on what your question is and, yeah. uh, and you go from there. Yeah, yeah, well, and I, and I mean, it might be something, and I, I know that would, would soils be infected by this at all, do you think, at all? Is that, is that, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit of a surprise question. <laughs> I just thought of it; it just came to my head. <laughs> uh, soils on their own might not be very mm -hmm. affected, uh, mm -hmm. like to time scales that it takes to sort of alter soil chemistry and soil physical characteristics are very, very long. Mm. Uh, but I think it definitely could uh, influence uh, plant life, for example, yeah? like growth seasons and. Ah. Uh, we know very, or at least I know very little, I can't speak for the entire scientific community, mm -hmm. but how um, pollution and things like that has actually dropped quite significantly, mm -hmm. changes um, plant metabolism and things like that. Really? Oh, that's cool. So is it, I'm guessing, okay, well, <laughs> that's so, so, so does that mean that if, like, I guess it just depends on what's happening, but if like, pollution could, um, lack of pollution might um, be better for, I guess, give plants more space to grow or something like that, potentially? Uh, not necessarily, yeah. but if you think about, um, uh, well, if you, if you think about carbon, like CO2 mm -hmm. in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. so um, part of what I study is, uh, you know, how elevated CO2 changes how plants interact with soil and soil microbes and nutrients in soil mm -hmm. and how their growth is related to that. Okay. Um, so if you have a, a, a very high level of CO2 in the atmosphere, you actually can see um, like a fertilization effect. Okay. Um, that plants grow more when you have more CO2. But, oh, um, really? And which has also been an argument then that it doesn't really matter that much if we increase the atmospheric CO2 because plants will just grow more. But that's not it's not that simple either. right yeah. so that's sort right. of what i study so definitely like um composition of the atmosphere has mm -hmm. an impact on plant growth and plant health okay so that's something we'll probably be finding out in coming years is how plants have been affected not necessarily so as but plants have been affected from this um the the change in carbon in the atmosphere yeah for sure i think that um yeah there are, there'll probably be studies coming out showing different aspects cool. of this. That, that's interesting. I've heard about a lot of things, but I haven't specifically thought about plant growth. Like I've heard about seismic activity um, and um, I've heard about stress of animals in the oceans, but I hadn't thought specifically about plants being affected. So cool. Interesting. Interesting. Well, well, thank you for that. And um, I'll take it a little bit away from the scientific background and more towards your personal situation. Your stuck in Arizona at the moment. <laughs> How does one get stuck in Arizona? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one travels for vacation and then just never leaves. That's the situation in a nutshell. Oh, well, it's pretty. I was there in December. It's got the Grand Canyon. It's not like you can go anywhere though, I guess. It's not like you're seeing all the national parks or anything. Um, the parks were open for for a long um, time into the whole uh, pandemic thing, but I mm -hmm. think that they eventually sort of tried to limit how many people went because okay. a lot of people went to the national parks because they couldn't do anything else. Right, right. So you came over here, you were gonna visit a friend on a holiday and you were gonna work on your PhD, wrap it up. And then um, what, um, so was that in February, was it? Or 
Uh, yeah, very, yeah, late February, um, really? before any travel restrictions sort of were put in place. When you were coming over, were you, was it in, in your mind at all? Were you thinking like, oh, this, no? <laughs> no. no, I don't, I think if, if, if I would have known how it would sort of unfold, mm -hmm. I don't think that I would have traveled. Yeah. Or I would have returned a lot sooner than was originally. Right, right. I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess um, you are still able to work at the moment. Like you, you, were, you came over here to visit a friend and also continue working. So you're still able to work from home, which is good. Yeah, yeah. I, have, uh, um, I have the privilege of working from my own computer. Yeah, all the time. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it's located. Yeah, yeah. Did, um, so I know that you, so you, things kind of started shutting down probably within a few weeks after you arrived. Um, what is it like um, in Arizona? Is it, um, have schools been canceled? Like is, is the count okay? I mean, I guess I think of Arizona as like desert land, but there are, <laughs> I imagine like there's not a huge population. It's not like New York or California, but is Definitely it? Definitely not yeah. a sense, no. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, the governor of Arizona um, uh, declared like a stay-at-home order. So mm -hmm. only essential businesses um, are were open. Still, mm -hmm. some like pharmacies and, you know, like uh, um, transport businesses and all of those mm -hmm. other things that are deemed essential. Um, which basically means that you stay at home uh, and work from home if you can. Mm -hmm. Um, and all the schools have closed uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. the university closed down even earlier, uh, mm -hmm. than, like in Tucson, mm -hmm. it closed down earlier than the stay at home order was enacted as well. So right. Right. And that's where you are. I didn't ask. Home. So you're in Tucson. Yeah. 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 And since, so, um, and since that has happened, I've heard a lot about different parts of the U.S. reopening. Is, is um, Arizona doing that as well? Yeah, so the the stay at home order were originally gonna be for a month, and then it was extended for two more weeks. But mm -hmm. it it was officially over on Monday, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, this right. week. Right. Right. Uh, and some businesses have started to open, but a, a lot of them have chosen to stay closed because really? they themselves feel that it's too early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or just um, not. I don't think everyone's allowed to open yet, but like restaurants are allowed to have dine in. And oh wow. Customers and things like that. But right. a lot of um, businesses have chosen to only do delivery still. Okay, interesting. Well, that's kind of reassuring, I guess, because one interesting thing that I'm looking at is um, Australia has started to reopen. Um, but when you compare the number of new cases each day in New South Wales, I think yesterday there were four. Um, there was two. We've had like a few cases and oh, the whole country has had just over 100 deaths. And I haven't, I should have, I should have before the interview looked specifically at the numbers in Arizona, but I believe that almost every single case is having far more than like four or five of like it's in the, the double digits, I think. So I, yeah. uh, I think the U S has been hit quite hard mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm glad to hear then that I guess people are taking precautions and even if the government is allowing it, then people are kind of um, being a little bit, um, cautious about it. What were your thoughts? Were you excited that things were opening back up? <laughs> or Yeah, like it's a dual thing, right? Yeah. Uh, we, me and my friend, we were just very excited to be able to go outside and, yeah. and you know, do something else than just be <laughs> yeah. in the apartment. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, it's also, it's not over. It's yeah. not like close to being like back to normal if that's mm -hmm. something that is going to happen ever. Yeah, uh, and I think that it's it's gonna um, be something that impacts the society for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in many ways it's still going to be from an economic perspective. This could very well just be the beginning, which is really scary. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so when you, when everything I was just curious so when did you realize so you couldn't leave Arizona like were you like looking at flights like what was the, because you're you were thinking oh maybe it would be good to go home but but 
what yeah so yeah so when it became clear that um australia wasn't gonna because i'm not legally allowed to enter because i'm not a, a permanent resident or a yes. citizen i'm a temporary resident on a student visa um when it became sort of clear that oh, oh um within the next three months which is how long i can stay in the u.s right uh, uh -huh. visa, yeah. um the australian border is not going to open so then what are my options where if i have to leave the u.s where can i enter also i am from sweden so sweden yeah. is the place that i can go to um so that i don't breach any visa regulations here right um but the u.s currently canceled like most or i, I don't know um they i remember seeing that all flights to europe were canceled unless it was the uk weirdly <laughs> Like the UK was all right. <laughs> I think it was, I think for a while, uh, a lot of flights were canceled and mm -hmm. um, some still, but um, there's a few airlines that still fly a couple of times a week okay. uh, to connect sort of the continents again, but okay. it's a lot less than mm -hmm. it used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you did, yeah. get, you, you did get a flight. Yeah. So okay. yes, yeah, so about a month ago, I got my flight to go to Sweden. I'm due to travel next week. And then yesterday, I got uh -huh. an email saying it was canceled. Oh, <gasps> uh, yeah. Oh, so, no. What? Yeah. But unfortunately, um, I could uh, book with another airline. Uh, okay. So, you so didn't I, lose I'm still traveling next week. It's okay. just on a different ticket. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I hope that that one doesn't get canceled. I hope that that goes as smoothly as as possible I, um, I think so it's a bigger airline so i think mm -hmm. that they um yeah yeah i'll be interested you'll have to let me know how that flight goes my brother flew from colombia to florida and they had um they everyone was wearing masks and they had like the middle seats all the middle seats were open to try to space it out so yeah i'll be wondering will it be a packed flight you know, will it be an empty flight? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's mandatory to wear masks. Mm -hmm. So, and that was like when you purchased a ticket, that's, uh, it says that like mm -hmm. it's mandatory. Oh. If you don't have a mask, you won't be let on. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Right. So we'll right. see. I right. think, um, yeah, it, it was going to be, I have no idea. So it will be mm -hmm. very interesting to see how this turns out. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I've been nowhere near an airport. So I've, I've, I've been reading a few little places about it. And I was like, previously big traveler it's been interesting to hear what it's like and i've heard of stories of airports being like ghost towns and stuff like that so um but um i hope that it all goes well next week that's soon i bet you have a few connecting flights as well if you're going from tucson to sweden so yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's about an 18 hour journey oh so. my goodness Right, right. Well, and I will also be curious to see, so I know that you have not been in Sweden before you were in um, Australia, but a lot of people all over the world are talking about um, the kind of Swedish experiment right now. And I was just re I mean, I've been kind of following it and reading about it a little bit. So schools never closed in Sweden. Um, uh, primary schools are still uh, open. Universities yeah. and high schools were uh, moved to be online. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So the primary school site opened and they never had, I don't believe there was like people followed guidelines, but restaurants and there was never like a, sh a shutdown in the same way. No. So mm -hmm. as far as I know, like I watch the Swedish news mm -hmm. not every day, but like at least a couple of times a week, you should mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. stay up to date and talk mm -hmm. to my friends and family back home. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, there was no general stay at home order or lockdown or businesses closing. Um, there's only been, uh, well, only, it's pretty, um, um, yeah, they talk about it almost every day. They have a press, con press conference every mm -hmm. day from the, mm -hmm. the, the Swedish version of the CDC. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so like social distancing is really important. And like they've uh, put new rules in place that like at restaurants, you can't be more than a certain number of people inside, but the business can still be open. Mm -hmm. Like you can still um, serve and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Many, I think that like the economic impact has still been pretty big because a lot of people have chosen to either not go or do less than right. they usually would. So, um, I think I saw a, a news 
segment that said that the only business that are booming is the flower industry because everyone's sending flowers to their relatives. Yeah, yeah. that is true. I'm sending, I, I found a flower delivery service, a few, and I totally, and it was funny because I'm not spending money on like restaurants and wine and stuff like that. So I'm just sending everyone, including myself, flowers. You can see I've got some ornamental sale back there. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of uh, that's kind of nice. I think <laughs> at least the plant, the plant yeah. industry is thriving. Well, yeah, yeah, it's good, <laughs> and um, a lot of people are a little bummed because they can't go to their uh, summer houses because there has mm. been a restriction, so you can't um, drive for more than two hours from your. Oh, okay. Home. Like right. it's still recommendations, mm -hmm. but um, I think people are uh, pretty vigilant about. Um, staying safe and, and protecting people that aren't strong enough mm. to survive together. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that so interesting. Um, and I talked to my friend, she's in Nevada, but her family's in the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, to a degree, did they called it an intelligent lockdown, she was saying. And it was in, in some ways kind of um, a little bit similar to what you're describing. But one thing I've just been wa wondering while looking at the U.S. and worrying and seeing these protests and stuff like that and, and I, I wonder if there's a psychological effect like just by instead of if, if if we just told people that it was dangerous and you could use your best judgment rather than than forcing laws on people mm -hmm. could that if I just I just I'll, I'm just curious if that's I mean I know that you don't necessarily have the answer but it's just kind of a an I think it's thing. very interesting um, yeah and I think also um, one of the um, arguments that was given for why the lockdown wasn't harsher or with stronger enforcement uh, is because in general people can't serve well they can survive but like the mentality of people being locked in their homes for a very long period of time sort of it's it becomes really difficult to come back from that and yeah um, like uh, when a population is so tired of being isolated, they just want to go out and do everything as normal. Whereas if you um, only limit certain things um, and set some restrictions, but still allow people to have as much normality as possible, mm -hmm. you can sustain that for a lot longer than oh. like a full lockdown. And so the whole point is to sort of um, spare the, um, the healthcare system so that mm -hmm. Like you see that top of the way, the top of the curve, mm -hmm. um, instead of being really high, so you have a lot of people in a very short amount of time mm -hmm. needing that medical attention, mm -hmm. you spread it out over a long yeah. period of time. So you have yeah. equal amounts of you know um, infections, but mm -hmm. uh, spread over a longer period of time so that the health system isn't mm -hmm. overrun. And is it? Are, you know, um, is it a good healthcare system in Sweden? Sorry, I interrupted you, <laughs> but. Um, but is, I would imagine, I just imagine all Scandinavian countries being like heaven, <laughs> like perfect in every way. <laughs> I, I think that it, the healthcare system is still pretty good. Like mm -hmm. um, it's, um, so we have uh, universal healthcare. So mm -hmm. if you get sick, there is no, um, you don't, you don't get like a massive bill that you have to pay off for the rest of your life for right. getting sick. Uh, right. And it is um, on a need basis. So um, it's, it, it has problems like a lot of country countries have mm -hmm. and like there's been cut downs and, and um, you know, changes to the bureaucracy uh, mm -hmm. aspect of it that makes it hard to function efficiently, but it's mm -hmm. still, it's still pretty good. Like mm -hmm. there is, um, yeah, I think the healthcare system works mm -hmm. pretty well. That's probably an, a good incentive as well. Like, you know, that even if everybody went nuts and decided to have a massive uh, party, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? It's not necessarily of how good a healthcare system is. It's how much resources are in place. So mm -hmm. um, in, in New York, the, they've talked a lot about how many respirators are available. Yeah, and yeah. that's been a big thing in Sweden as well. And uh, so far, I think that they've never reached uh, above capacity. Okay. So, it, so there was never a shortage of respirators because mm -hmm. not that many people were sick at the same time or needed yeah. them at the same time. Yeah. Um, whereas in New York, they they ran out. In Italy, they ran out. Yeah. 
you know like yeah. there was too many people that needed them and not mm -hmm. enough resources mm -hmm. um yeah and that's so interesting because it's kind of like i guess it's just so hard to predict exactly how you know the virus is, is going to work because some people i know australia prepared and they had they were like sourcing ventilators and i talked to different people about preparing the their icu wars a girl a nurse i talked to in canada um jess was saying that they were they like opened up the hospital and then they did, it didn't it didn't happen so it's kind of oh, it's 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 almost like it seems like a guessing game a little bit but um yeah, yeah. and i also think that they're like as far as like i can see in like you know the um the amount of deaths that's been seen in a country versus how strong their uh their stay at home uh, isolation policy has been mm -hmm. is not necessarily correlated yeah uh, yeah so it's hard to sort of say oh it worked we yeah. isolated and no one got sick or a very few mm. number of people died and then there's other countries where they isolated to a, a extreme mm -hmm. extent but they still had you know a high death rate and yeah high infection rate yeah so i think that it's difficult to sort of pat yourself on the back and say oh we did such a good job when we don't really know why certain countries were less affected than others so. yeah yeah and i'm hoping that in the coming years it'll become clear and we can kind of see it i know that um as like australia and new zealand both who have very different governments both had tight lockdowns um but not as tight as some places like takeaway shops were still open you could still go outside to exercise i saw that in spain you couldn't go out to exercise at all um yeah and we did i mean we did much better than a lot of places is it because we're more isolated is it because we would kind of it still happened in the summer autumn rather than the middle of winter so do you yeah yeah, there's there's so many factors mm -hmm. that um, it's hard to make any conclusions at all. And I, I think I just had this conversation with my mom the other week and I told her uh, that we won't know if we ever know, we won't know yeah. until like three in three years. Yeah. When we can look yeah. at all the statistics and all of the factors that. Yeah. 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 How does your friends and family feel? Like, do you think that most people support uh, Sweden's strategy or are there people wishing that it was more strict or i i think that there are both i think that um like a lot of people have been scared and sort mm -hmm. of wondering okay so everyone else is isolating why are we still like mm -hmm. able to walk around and go to restaurants and do all the things um and sort of questioning if uh, how safe it was mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. And they might have chosen to isolate themselves yeah. in that case. And yeah. like, um, like there was a general. So if you're above seventy years old or have um, other underlying like asthma or diabetes or anything like that mm -hmm. that puts you in a risk group, you were highly encouraged to right. to, to say self isolate to uh -huh. sort of not um, right. take the risk, right? Right, right, right. Um, yeah so uh, yeah i think that um a lot of people are happy that they were still able to sort of go to the parks and mm -hmm. you know, their friends mm -hmm. and um yeah and all the things like that like they there's still a limit i think it's like you can't uh, gather more than 50 people oh, okay right so like right a lot of like movie theaters and stuff like that has yeah. closed just and churches churches would be as well i would guess then yeah if there's right. more than 50 people mm -hmm. or they cap it right so right like, they right. count and then when you reach that number okay so no one else yeah, yeah. <laughs> you better get to church early <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> interesting and is um are people wearing masks um so because i'm not there i don't really yeah. know yeah uh, i don't get the sense that people mm -hmm. are right um right but I, 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 I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, next week I'll be able to yeah, go, yeah. oh yes, there are people yeah. with masks. Yeah. But now I, don't, I have no clue. Are there people with masks in Arizona? Yes. So yeah. um, uh, it's uh, in many businesses, they mm -hmm. give you a mask when you enter if you don't. Oh, have wow. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So if you go to a grocery store uh, mm -hmm. uh, or a particular grocery store, they'll hand you a mask uh, when you enter. Interesting. That's so interesting to me because the very beginning they were like masks don't work and now they're encouraging everyone and then there was a supply like a shortage and now they're handing them out like hand sanitizer yeah so, exactly yeah oh. it's a strange thing 
Yeah. I don't like, yeah, with, I mean, with masks, I think it's also a psychological thing. Um, yes. Yes. Because it gives the sense of a security, which isn't mm -hmm. necessarily true, which can be dangerous because then mm -hmm. you don't observe the, you know, six feet um, uh, social distancing mm -hmm. rule maybe mm -hmm. as hard. Mm -hmm. um, but um, like the beauty about the masks is that it protects other people, which is yes. sort of the nice thing, right? Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting sick, but you won't, you know, spread your micro drops around by speaking or coughing or, you know, laughing too loud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that um, one of the first person I interviewed, uh, David, who lives in Shanghai, says that everybody goes out like it's just it's just it's just as much about a community thing, just kind of feeling that we're all looking out for one another. And just by feeling that and it's true, like, you know, this mask I've not taken off in Australia at all. And it definitely feels like when you're in the grocery store or anything like that, there's definitely like, you know, there's weird dynamics about people getting too close to you. And I mean, you should distance anyway, but I think it's interesting that I see it as kind of, it could be a kind of a beautiful thing, but it has become very polarized, which is so disappointing because mm -hmm. it, sh it should not be, it should not be a political issue at all. I find it so frustrating how so many things have become political when, when I was hoping everyone says it's a chance for us to come together. So. Yeah. And um, I think that I, I, I think that the, um, the majority of people have sort of that feeling of we're in this together is yes. a lot larger population than the people to go, mm, I don't want yeah. to, uh, yeah. like, yeah. whatever. I yeah. think that uh, they get equal amount of, um, you know, space in media and like yeah. we always highlight the, the things that are sort of not the norm mm. because it's sensational in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I think the vast majority of people are um, sort of embracing the togetherness of, of what we're all being uh, put through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. There is definitely, if it bleeds, it leads kind of mentality with a lot of things. It's not, and I understand, I understand that people need like, like stories. It's about having a good story, but yeah, it is also important to remember. My dad was saying this as well. He's like, you see a lot of stuff about protests and stuff like that, but a lot of people are just like staying in and being cautious and you don't yeah. that's not the typical narrative because it's boring so yeah but there's not a lot of story going on yeah, yeah. inside this apartment yeah. either <laughs> <laughs> you know I think, no I, I found it really interesting i wanted to ask you and this is a bit arbitrary and i won't take too much more of your time um but josh was just telling me um this idea about vitamin d there's been a lot of stuff around vitamin d and um there is a hypothesis that um that uh, there's a theory that vitamin D is good for preventing the virus. And Sweden is a uh, dark country, like, um, so not a lot of sunshine. It's no Australia, but people take supplements. Do people take uh, a lot of supplements? Maybe like that was- People evident. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People do take supplements. Um, it's recommended to give to children mm -hmm. um, just during the dark months of the year. So Sweden is a very dark country, but for half of the year, right? Uh -huh. So oh, yes. half of the year is very dark, and half of the year is very light. Thank you um, for clarifying that. <laughs> yeah. It's not dark all the time. That would be very depressing. Uh, <laughs> so, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so right. Yeah. Um, so in Sweden is a very long country. So like we span of, um, a lot of, um, degrees in uh, longitude or latitude, I can't remember, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which means that um, in winter in the north of Sweden, it would be completely dark for a couple of weeks. And in summer, it would be light all day, like 24 hours a day for a couple of weeks. And then you see that that changes um, over, over the year that sort of spins around. Wow. Yeah, so we have both um, midnight sun and no sun at all. Cool, crazy. That's yeah, but that's in the north of the country, yeah. above yeah. the polar circle. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the south, or in the majority of the country, mm -hmm. it's uh, you don't get completely dark and you don't get completely mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. um, right. But it's still like the day length. Oh, I can't remember how many hours differences is between, but like it's not uncommon to have uh, around midsummer mm -hmm. be almost twenty hours of sunlight. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So there. So in a, summer you wouldn't need to yeah. um, use any supplements. <laughs> no. 
no. But is it, but you said kids take it and it's something that people are concerned about. So that's an interesting thing. We'll find yeah, out. Yeah, because it's a, it's a mood, like mostly for mood. So when it's All very right. dark outside, um, um, it's, it can be difficult to manage your, your dark moods. Uh, <laughs> like melancholy is a very mm -hmm. common thing. And like, I think that's a lot where like the Swedish noir and or Nordic noir movies and television series are all very dark and broody. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of- That's a, like, that's what I envisioned, you know? I didn't even know, like, I just think of like, yeah. And, and I didn't realize that there were times when it was 24 hours a day of sunlight. So that's yeah, interesting. But the, so, yeah. We don't talk about that because yeah. it's happy and it's boring, <laughs> right? So it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I want to go to Sweden when it's, when it's sunny 24 hours a day. It's beautiful. It's yeah. a, it's a thing. It's very special. Um, a lot of cool. people don't like it because it's very hard to fall asleep, but yeah. it's, uh, it's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. feels like it's 3 PM all day around. Wow. Cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for dropping that little bit of knowledge. I wasn't expecting to learn that from this interview, but, um, and just anything else you want to include Johan, before I let you go, is there any silver linings or is there anything you wish people were talking more about during this or anything like that? Um, I don't know. I think that, uh, yeah, I'm quite, so like, it's definitely been difficult at times sort of being cooped up indoors mm -hmm. and a lot of people have felt the same, like slightly going insane, uh, over a couple of weeks. Uh, but all in all, I think that for me, it's, um, it's been a good opportunity to sort of do things that I wouldn't normally think that I had time for, like, mm you know, like read more books or um, I've gotten a lot more into my meditation practice. Oh, cool. and, uh, all of those things that I sort of hope that I will take with me when we come out of this, right? And yeah. continue doing and, and um, yeah, and I hope that, um, well, I, I hope that a lot of people have sort of found things that they used to enjoy doing but didn't really have time for in their busy lives and now sort of found their way back to that. So. Yeah, yeah. I know I have been yoga at home and playing guitar and all kinds of stuff. So, exactly. so it, has been, it has been a special awakening for me personally and learning to, and talking to people from around the world, which I was never doing before. And I found it so much fun. Even, yeah. you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this information. It's just been so great to talk to different people. And that makes me feel better too, to hear different perspectives and see what it's like in different places. It makes me feel like the world is less on fire. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. Um, well, Joanna, thank you so much for talking to me today. I will not take any more of your time, but um, thank you so much. Thank you, it was fun. Mm -hmm.